Hey guys, welcome to part three. Please make sure you check out the other videos in the series. If you're a Krieger fan, you are missing out if you haven't seen them. In this final episode, we spend time with Rolf Sommer and see a mid and measure K20 taking shape from the blank all the way through to a white stock. We get to try a bit of checkering, which it turns out is really easy. Don't bother watching that bit, we were great at it. So here we are at the wood room mm -hmm. uh, where we have been before. So we do the custom stocks here, what he's working on at the moment. Uh, we also do the uh, the standard stocks. Standard stocks talking about uh, fix, finished stocks yeah. actually. So the, the finishing is on, the, the checkering is already finished, mm -hmm. and the pad is already finished also. So that the stock is actually ready to go, uh, but need to be final fitted to the receiver. So we have on the on the on the fitting surfaces from the wood to the metal, mm -hmm. we have more material actually on it. So there's more wood actually on than we actually need at the end of it. So we have the chance to final fit this standard stock actually to the, to the receiver. So the fit quality actually from the custom stock comparing to the standard stock will be exactly the same. Yeah. So literally every Kriegoff stock passes through these. Yes, these yes. Rings every these every every stock from it, it doesn't matter if it's a standard stock or it's a custom stock will be going going through this department here. And uh, we also do, as I, as I told you before, uh, we do the uh, like a, like a micro bed fitting from mm. from the stock in the back area, which is very important because if you're talking about different wood qualities, different wood qualities, not uh, only talking about the appearance of the wood, but some some pieces of wood are more softer than the other ones, yes. or they're harder ones, the softer ones, and uh, more the, the the plain the plain quality actually, which is a standard standard grain lines, is more like the softer wood quality. So it needs to have this, uh, this this plastic bedding in the back of the stock to really be able to take the recall yeah. uh, for many many years, yes. because the wood is just too soft to, yeah. to actually take the recall. So otherwise the receiver you're, actually you're augmenting the, the wood exactly. Yeah. So the receiver will actually be set back into the wood. That's what we don't want to have. Uh, because that will uh, make the stock crack in a certain time of, of, of well, in many, many years of use. So you really want to have this plastic bedding in the back, so to have this uh, fitting actually done to 100%, so the metal actually fits to the, to the plastic, uh, so to say, uh, to 100%, and it takes the recoil quite in a good quality and the stock will not break. So if it takes, we were talking earlier, if it takes two days to make a custom stock, when you've got the ones that are already done, how long roughly to fit one to a, a standard gun? The, the st a standard stock to a, to a uh, I would say the final fit will take about an hour. Right. An hour, yeah. And that'll exclude, include the forehand or not? Or? Uh, that includes the forehand, yes. Right. And it also includes the, the micro bedding, mm -hmm. uh, but the bedding needs to be cleaned up, so that means we really have to put the plastic inside. Right. You let it cure for actually for 24, 24 hours. And then you take it off, and then you take the excess, excessive uh, material. Uh, material actually off to clean it off, and to put the stock actually back on, and then you're ready to go. But you have to take it off afterwards again, clean it off, and put the stock back on to be ready right. to go. Right. So the bed is similar to like what you would get on a, on a rifle bed. No it's rifle. actually exactly the same thing. Yeah. Exactly yeah. the same thing. So you really, with with this techno technology, with this material, you can achieve 100% fit. Yeah. What you yeah. normally cannot do if you do the fitting by hand. Yeah. So you will never reach 100%. You will reach most of it, but you cannot get all of it. Also guess but, and it's only in the back area where actually 80% of the recall will be put into the stock. So that's where we want to have to, the maximum strength. In, in years time when the good stock gun stock comes off the service, I guess it's getting that repeat of the stock going back on the action in the Because same exactly place. the same place, yes. Yeah, yeah. So these are just like action sort of slaves that he puts on yes, the board. Just old actions actually, that he has the possibility to clamp it into the yeah. vice. Yeah. And also to do the fitting. Uh, he uses normally old parts to do the fitting because the, the metal parts are always the same. Yeah. So yeah. The, the, wood, yeah, yeah. the wood fit actually is... They'd be always the same. Yeah, they that's should be telling, always the same. That's <laughs> telling someone who did not work with it because the tolerances be there. That, but that's normal. You had a tolerance window from two and that's what Wolfgang means. If you take it, it should normal fit. But we had sometimes if the, the tolerance was on one set, of the receiver a little smaller, and on the one you had a tenth more, yeah. you feel it in the wood. That's unbelievable. Sometimes you you feel the difference. Yeah. Yeah. Because you and what we had here, that was the old, that was the old receiver part. That was um, there where we did the receiver out of two pieces. So that's the the receiver and the lock plate. 
So the old K20, they use yeah, a yeah. small K20. plate, an interchangeable one. And now and it's one it's piece. One piece. It's the same as a K80, actually. Yeah, it's yeah. the same. And the difference is that's what I had to mill in now is um, we had guide blocks that you fix it and it's adjusted right to the height, it's tight. Because on the car 80, you had two big pieces which sets the receiver in the right position. And that's a thing you did not have on the car 80. And that's why we did the change on the receiver that we had these guide blocks. So you mill it in and you put it in the stock and they be guided by that tool. Yeah. So the stock actually has a slot on yeah. the left and the yeah. right side, so it actually so that you have it, it, all it secures the, the stock in place so you cannot move up place. and down. Okay. No, because if not, yeah. you yeah. see there are, yeah. just, there are just little, little um, yeah, let me say, areas yeah. where the receiver could be guided and that's too less on, on the car 20. That's why we, we change it to this guide block. And that's the thing I do at first because the, the first fitting that was with a regular, we can uh, fit it with a regular receiver and then... Um, this is the first thing I've done, right? Yes, I'll do it now. And the problem is, you know, you can do it with a regular receiver. Mm-hmm. When the car is not positioned. Yeah, exactly. Then I'll do it and then I'll take the base cast, you know, and then... So this is the milling fixture actually now to do those two slots. Oh, because right, it, because yeah. it, since it's a, uh, it's a custom stock, so it's no CNC work actually on that one, so you really have to do everything manually. So what he's doing here on the manual milling machine is normally done on a pre-cut stock on the CNC machine. This walnut, is this American, Turkish, or where is it? The Turkish. walnut, Turkish. Turkish yes. walnut. Yeah. American is more red. Yeah. That's a claro walnut, which is called, it has a lot of the, 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 the air holes actually in, in, inside the wood. It's yeah. much bigger, so the, 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 the strength of the wood is actually less. Yeah, less. So the Turkish walnut is more dense. The problem is the, the, Tur the, the Turkish walnut See? got a lot more grain. In the in the in the wood than the American. That's. Uh, and it's nicer to look at actually. Nicer to look at. Nicer to look at and and more strong. So it takes the recall actually better. Right. Okay. Um, first we start with the length. Normally, <coughs> on, on each end, make we start the same way. We do it at first the the. The borders, the drop, the length, the pistol grip length, pistol grip height, the radius here, the thickness here, and if you had the complete shape, if you look on it, then you just start a next step with the casting. Just do everything uh. over the rim, and that's. So the good thing is we need not uh, three measurements, the top, the middle and the bottom. We just need the middle mm -hmm. and then we did the pitch and the pitch from the angle. that stock is five degrees. So we had the five degrees and that's it. Wahrscheinlich, yeah. So the outside contour is cut out by the bandsaw, mm -hmm. as we have seen before. And uh, Ralph, what are you doing at the moment or what's the next step going to be? To cut the rough material off from the side. So, so I see you have uh, the cast line now. Yeah. Um, so how do you um, how do you draw that? How do you actually get that? That was uh, done over the rip. From the all all the, the dimensions uh, drop drop uh, and cast. That was all done over the over the rip. Uh, over the height of the rib and over the center of the rib and that uh, stock has an offset um, about eight 
9 millimeters. And now that's all what you see all in the back. That's all too much, left and right. Of course. And um, we need a few help lines um, in the front because there you had no point. So we take the drawing and there. And we take that size from the back. That we saw it. And that's the line. What we all take away. Okay. I love the confidence when you see somebody working with this thick as can piece of wood. That's going to be a big surprise, trust me, if we saw it out now. Because look, that's the, the rough grip length, grip height. And you have the grip cup fixed now, so you have a dimension. Yep. And now, so. Back to the band saw. Is it, is it similar to what you have seen at the, at the Pazzi factory? Is it totally different? Or? Similar, but different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, similar, but different. Same processes, but done in a different way. Done in a different way? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, for us, the uh, basically CNC mill their stock. Okay. So it's 95% before they start firing it. There's very little kind of handwork that goes into getting it to that okay. position. Okay. Okay. Um, all the so they, so they, they also do the custom stock by the CNC machine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm going to do like a copy of the Okay, okay. You should watch the video. <laughs> I should do that, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that. There, there, there is a video. Yeah, there's three. <laughs> three of them, okay. And the video is on YouTube? Yes. Yeah. You have my car that you can yes, just yes. Yeah. the link yeah. name. Yeah. So even the standard stocks are fitted in here too. Because mm -hmm. the I guess you, you get the, the low grade stuff is made out, outside. Exactly, it's done with a CNC machine, of course. Yeah. So the, the lettering, the checkering, and the pad yeah. is already fitted, so it's so all, all done. They're, they're headed up and fitted. <laughs> yeah, the final fitting needs to be done by hand. Okay. It's just the same process as the custom stock, actually, yeah. also. So we have actually more material on the stock than what is necessary at yeah, the end yeah. of it. So we have. That's not bad, I mean, I can shoot that. And as much as the saw away, as best you had to file out all. Yeah, yeah. And as you see, the pieces will fall away or fall apart. That's a, a lot of, of material. That's going to be pretty. For sure. And then the rest work is now done by hand. With the file. With the file and uh... And do you have any special instructions in terms of the pistol grip or palm swell or anything? I adjust the, the diameter from left to right and the rest is done. Freeform. Right. That's what uh, the most of the, uh, the handmade stocks do a lot of freeform because there'd be a few things like the drop length of pull, grip length, thickness of the grip or position of the palms. Well, that's uh, a thing you could measure or you see, but the thickness here, the thickness here, or here, or the height, or here, that's a thing. Yeah. yeah, it's free form. You can you do a standard shape. What 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 do you think? What 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 is okay? But as you think, or radius radiuses which go here and here, that's a thing you you could not yes. measure exactly. Important is that that it looks smooth. Um, one one shape that you have no holes in or or edges you find in that's important. Yeah. Looks like a stock now, almost. Have you done this before? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
He didn't tell you that's a different one than in the morning. <laughs> So one yes. teeth left, one teeth right, and this that's a, that's yeah, and this is parallel because we want the the smallest cut it is possible. And the problem is you could not get this thin uh, saw. The, the the thinnest blade you can get is one millimeter, mm -hmm. and the problem is if it's huge, huge like this, it starts to vibrate, vibrate yeah. and it goes bigger. So we use this. It's zero point six, but then I had to cool with air. Yeah. Because if if it um, if it goes hot, it bends it sets, it it bend and it sets yeah. tight in the wood. Okay. okay. That, that's what he was telling us. So that's it bends. what I told you. Flexing. We use the front one. And the back one, it's touching a bit, but it's not worse because that's the, the nut or the, 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 yeah, all the screw. Is coming off. Because we had two millimeters left. Take the other one because in front I get it in. That's sometimes a question um, of the wood. You have wood, you think, hmm, okay, because the, the blade is brand new. But if I. I had to turn very, very quick, and the problem is if you film, I go a bit slower because then it's. It says, if you go now with the twisted blade, you had a an, an very bad or, uh, edge here. So I had to stop, put it out, and nothing is happening. And you turn it, and you can use the other side so you had it on film. Touch it, it's very warm. It's still warm, and I, it's just warm. But I cool it, and that's, that's depending with the wood. Yeah, you can actually get harder bits sometimes. How about your middle gun service around that one? Just take the bandsaw. Yeah, normal, a lot of them cut it out, just round with the bandsaw, put yeah. it on them. But we want the same optic and the same style then every Greek hoof yeah. yeah. And that's why we had to do it like this because it's repeatable, isn't it? It's yeah. 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 And here I just take care that I did not get in the, the curve of the thumb yeah, yeah. because if you adjust that and you get get a, a gap here, that's uh, that could be a problem. You just cool it down and then I do it faster. Try it, next test. I've never seen that before either. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
Was, Ralf, was ist das für ein Ding? Was ist das mit dem Loch drin? Hä? Mit, mit dem Loch drin? Das ist ein Beschussschrift. Ach, die hat man so gemacht, dass ja, man sie gleich kennt. Ja, wir haben tolle Kollegen, die fliegen das nicht. Weiß. Echt oder was? Und hinter einem Beschussschrift haben wir drei, glaube ich. Oh. Wegen dem hat man jetzt gesagt, mit Kennzeichen, die immer eindeutig. Das stocks for the, for, the, for the proof house. If you send the gun to the proof house, so we have to put a stock on it, that's, that's and, and these are the ones with the hole, so you know immediately this is not a regular stock, this is ah. a proof stock. If you had a repair, uh, a repair or service gun here, it is hard used, and you had no hole in, right? it could be a proof stock or... Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, now... My heart's in the mouth, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even doing it. What's that? We're nervous for him. Yeah. <laughs> without uh, wood teeth, so you had to be careful, and it's one, uh, one millimeter. Now the problem is, I could not get to the other side, so that's the good thing if you do it with a milling machine, if you could take the wise away, Da waren wir noch nicht, gehen wir, gehen wir dann auf, ja. Geht ja hoch, oder? Ja. Also haben sie ja aufräumen, wir packen die Fahrt. Oh ja, komm, dann sagst du. Ja, genau. Alles klar. Da sind wir vielleicht bis in einer halben Stunde oder so. Ja. You know it? Ja. Achso, nein. We had to black it out. Because it's a trick, no trick, it's no secret. It's very simple. It's just going to twat, it's just going to hit it. No, it's very simple. Hey, it's very simple. You had a saw? Yeah. You set it to the left side. So you go there. Then 
That's why we do it one millimeter. We probably do it with a thinner one. We could not get the blade through it. If I want to have this, it's not a problem. You, you get it. Or you get this Chinese saw. Right. But the problem is this Chinese saw, which was so side both sides. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the problem is the, the wider. Yes. And, and like this, because sometimes if you had a stock, it could be that you just had a very thin area where you can put the blade through, mm -hmm. and then the other one is not, it's not good. This is. For me personally, to cut it out, the, one of the best options. <laughs> that's it. Oh, that's a set, but that's no problem. I had to clean it now with the miller. Mm. I do this on the bend uh, grinder, and here you see the. Uh, the edges and look here it's not complete cut it because the, the the blade is not big enough but for me it's enough to have it in the front yes that i could get through yeah. with the with the saw did you see the thing yeah, yeah it's like there's nothing sometimes you ask i can use the same colors here yeah because you know some guys they should cut it out and then throw it away and take the next one and fit it in <laughs> because if you do it with a band saw, uh, the problem is to get in, a, in the 90 degrees angle because if you cut it away, it's... Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's, that's the good thing if you do it on a machine. And now, we take a muller, we clean it out, we take the bottom part in, then we mark the top part, put the back stock out, had a fixture for the comb, and then it's done. Just like that. Very Just like simple. that. <laughs> Very simple. You're doing the next one, so. Sorry, Ralph, can we turn the radio down a touch? Can we? The radio. Can we turn it yeah, down? Yeah, yeah. Danke. Okay, okay, now it's time. When you see the adjust part is now completely in. Yeah. 
very perfect fit too. So when you see the grain and everything, it's nearly the same. Mm. Look here and there. And the last step is then just to uh, to round to do round the comb. And then the the stock uh, is more or less done. Right? Confidence for you, yeah. Oh, right away. Yesterday, when you were talking about how to use a file yeah. and the pressure differential, yeah. Yeah. if you watch, you can see it in his hand. You can see the pressure differential changing yeah. across the file. Yeah. And if you would look from the side, so you have the side view actually from the file, mm -hmm. you will see that the file actually is keeping straight. It will not go like this. Yeah. Oh, well, last time. <laughs> Not much. So just the other side and here the radius. And then uh, ready for stopping. So how fine do you go with uh, um, grit in terms of getting the finish down. Uh, the, the next step is to, to fight, uh, uh, grind it with uh, 100 uh, corn, 100 grains, uh, so 100, 100 grit, grit, grit yeah. paper, yeah. 100 grit that's there. Mm. Then the, the next step is the stock filling. Mm -hmm. Then we take the grit 180, and then at least we take uh, 320. Mm -hmm. And then the last step is polishing it with the steel. steel one. And then we take all the parts uh, apart. So steel plate goes mm -hmm. to the engraving. Um, the recoil pad is uh, going to be leather covered. Mm -hmm. uh, stock goes first time into oil, maybe two times, then get the checkering. Then we collect it the, fini uh, the, the finish. And then approximately one, one and a half, two weeks later, the stock is normal done. Mm. And that's the, the, the oiling process takes yeah. that long because you, you the let it cure. The oiling process is, is roughly uh, a week out. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's depending. Mm. Yeah, you see the, the, the thing is on, on that one, it's a nice small stock and you had a very fine uh, Grain in the wood, mm. so that's that's absolutely yeah. nice. nice. It'll fill nicely yeah. when you want. Yeah, I think the customer will be absolutely happy with that. And you mentioned yesterday the oiling process. You start with it without the checkering. You oil it, and then you do the checkering because it gives the wood more strength. The no, the, the, the thing is, it, it it is more or less like uh, sawing uh, in the checkering. It's it's just the tool. Uh, we are using which, which has these teeth. It's, mm -hmm. it's like a saw, but it's working not normal. A, saw, a, saw, uh, a steel saw goes to push. Mm. It's just cut, cutting at the push, push movement. And that's it, uh, it's a, a tool who is working forward and backward. Right. And the thing is, if it's like an engine. If you, if you had oil in it, it's going well. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, if you mill, and use uh, cooling liquid so it's doing well and here it's the same if you have it dry it's a bit it works mm -hmm. but it, it, 
if it's oil that makes the job a lot better. easier and better. And the, the thing is, personally, what I think, I don't know if it's right or not, but I personally think the, the wood is more flexible and, and, and not so, um, yeah, we, we call it grünlich, it's, 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 it's uh, dry, it is, it is mm. not, so, not so smooth. Yes. And, and I think that makes it a lot better. Sometimes if I cut the checker in one direction and I feel ah, it's not that going so well, I take extra oil mm -hmm. and put the, the oil extra on my first cut it checkering right. that it's going into the, 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 the first lines. Yeah. Yeah. If I cut the second line, it, then it is smoother. more smoother. Yeah. And when you cut them first lines, are you drawing it with a pencil? Or yeah. You, yeah. So you draw yeah, it and, and, and pencil, that's 8B, that's very soft. Mm -hmm. um, so if you had them already done stock and, and oiled, you can take a, a towel and a little oil and wash it away the pencil. Mm -hmm. So the problem if, if, is if you had, for example, a 2H, mm -hmm. That's, not enough. that's like a steel needle, yeah, yeah. you make a, a mark on it, and if you did not exactly hit the mark, mm -hmm. you will see it, mark. and you had to grind it away, and yeah. that's the good thing on the 8B, that's so soft, no problems. And then we did the drawing normal, we, we cut a normal uh, right hand, right, did a little, yeah, a little box in here, where the palms, well, uh, the thumb ball is, so that you have here, in that area, a little more checkering. Mm. So if you grab the gun and you have the thumb ball, you get an extra grip, grip. Yeah. an extra grip there. And you do the checkering yourself as well, it's not a separate process? Uh, I had a colleague who, who helped me and we had supplier who do it. But normal, um, we can, we, oh, or I, be able to do it. Today, we will get visitors from India and they want to take their stock with them. And uh, there, we had to, or I had to cut. It looks very easy, that, doesn't it? It looks, it looks, it looks <laughs> like dull, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On a flat surface. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah not going around any curves or yeah. anything. Yeah. That's the most tricky part to go around the curve. And yeah. if you look from the side, it's like a straight line. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they want to make it like on like a 3D this. surface. Yeah, yeah. 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 So you just the, the the tooth. You're just dropping it into the last groove and moving yeah. over and moving over. Yeah. So you use the last groove as a guideline. Actually. Yeah. I'm gonna have a go at this. You can <laughs> very try it. You use. You had two. Teeth line. Oh. Uh, a three. See one? Yes. Two, three. One is the guide. Yep. Or two teeth line be the guide. And, and the, the other third one, one is the cut. Yeah. And if you be good, you can use just one teeth. Oh. And <laughs> and <laughs> cut two. Cut two. Hmm. That's gonna try. Just if you are right hand, yep. then it's the teeth as well. What I need is now. You're in the old. I'm in the old, so I'm going to. Okay, just a second. It's now less pressure on left. Less pressure. A lot of forward and backward movement. Yeah. And you're out. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> and it, <laughs> it looked so easy when I did it. Look, start, <laughs> start. I just showed you. It's very simple. I cut it's very new. simple. I cut this new because the problem is. Okay. Now you get in the old. No, you cut in the old. Yeah. Look, at first, put it in, and then a lot of less movement, or much movement, less pressure, no pressure. to left to the left, left, and then if you had the guiding line, give more pressure until you are on the right. Let the tool do the work. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Now, and that, a lot of movement and less pressure, yeah? As it jumped oh, over? Yeah, you basically have to jump over. I wouldn't be getting an apprenticeship job like that. <laughs> it looks like you've done that one. Yeah? Yeah? You've done one. 
Chris, while you're ahead. I'll, I'll stop there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's okay. You see, that's, that's yours. Okay. It's okay. Absolutely. That's fine. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> cannot, <laughs> cannot get any better than that. The thing is, to be honest, this is an epoxy shoe face. Oh. And that's very, very hard. Because uh, you don't have to make excuses for me. Yeah, I know I'm <laughs> yeah but it's 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 easier uh, if you had an just raw oil, wood and an raw wood just oil. But it should be. Look, the thing is, you had to just you you re, re, re cut the other side also to get to get the because you had to get the pyramids pyramids. Uh, uh, you, uh, had, uh, you had these little spots in, so we re cut it one or two times over cross. So how, how did you work the, the angle out? That's by eye. Yes, by eye. Millions of years of practice. Just the thing is, if you um, if you go to flat, it's more a square, and if you go too extreme, um, it's not a, a nice diamond. It's uh, yeah. Very long, very thin, and mm. the risk to break it out mm. if you handle it is, is hard. Look, now that's perfect. Was in the 30 degrees, man. Just even the checker in it. Yeah. It's just not appreciated enough, no, is it? No, it isn't. It isn't. Um, yeah, Good. I mean, I, I've watched it being done in other factories, and mm -hmm. it, they make it look yeah. super easy, and it, it's super easy. Normal, <laughs> no, 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 no. normal for a stand-up checkering on a handmade stock, the, let me say more or less, standard time is 90 to 120 minutes. Mm. Complete done. For, yeah. for, for an end button? No, for, just for the for, for the button. Yeah. Right. But that's, that's, that's the, the standard time, mm. 90 to 20, and the, the foreign kind is tricky because that's very tough to cut because you you had to cut from both sides and you had this diamond mm. uh, in the center that's a, a really tricky checkering right. and it yeah. lasts normal roughly three to four hours wow. so you had to cut if you cut the foreign and, and the buttstock uh, you need approximately six hours and five, get five foreign and match up on the yeah. It, yeah. yeah, it's all all around the body actually. And, the bottom the body. Of it. Is I can show you the, the. You can do several mistakes because. <laughs> <laughs> the is, Not hmm. only several. <laughs> the problem is look, that's that's a hand cutted stock, and normal. You had this diamond which is in the center, mm -hmm. and you cut like this, and you match it together here. That's the problem because normally you cut like that, complete. Yeah. And here you do start with these two lines, and out of this, the the whole check. You have to build everything because you're gonna be built. Yeah. And every angle, at C is matching to the checkering inside. On the cheaper versions, or sometimes on on if it's not running very well, uh -huh. you had problems here that the set center line the checkery did not match to the border because they do then a little trick <laughs> okay yeah, yeah that's but that sometimes happen if you think you had to cut 40 or 50 lines to that direction and at the end this side and this side gonna match here yeah yeah that's a that's <laughs> and and the thing is if you look on this angle and this angle you had to be careful because sometimes you turn like this. Yeah, because yeah. it's, it's a 3D surface. Yeah, yeah it's, it's curved, so you make the angle flatter mm. here and sharper here, then it looks completely different. But if you look on that one, that side yeah. is similar. The tips here and here is similar. And this is centered mm -hmm. and centered. The rosettes be centered. Here it's centered. And if you look here on the tip and here, it's the same, mm. and that's that shows me that a uh, lot of experience <laughs> yeah. of the cattle. So, is this all measured out and drawn out in pencil exactly? We do. We do it first. This spot, this spot. We do the the marks with the eight B. Yeah. Then I take that line and that line, and then we do that line 
to that direction and left that line to that direction. Mm. So you have one line here and one line here, and then you start from there. Everything else matches up around it. You fill at first this one, so you cut to that direction that you had that tip, then you are here. And then you go over here and cut out there. And so every tip mm. gonna be built with that only that two lines. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's so nice to see the like level of skill that you just well like I said. <laughs> yeah. Even, the man makes it look like effortless. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if you cut it you could look away, it's no problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After a while you get the feeling of, of the lines, how yeah. it uh, runs and then the problem is then uh, if you had uh, a bottle where you had to stop, <laughs> because the problem is if you cut keep out, going. if you keep going through the border, you had the double line who, who covers a little, but if you go too wide, it's starting. There's, there's no margin for error, is there? Grinding <laughs> yeah. and filing and oh, <laughs> yeah, this is happening if you start. If you start and you cut a check ring. <laughs> You see, every line goes over the board, yeah, and then yeah. you start with sandpaper, take it away, and uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, the thing is, if you if you did not work very well or properly, you had the problem more work again. Yeah. You can actually see if you look if you look over the check ring this direction, you will see each diamond after the one, and you will the see that it's a little bit like this. Yeah, mm. but if you, you think it's that. a length, it's a length of. You see that? Oh, yeah, yeah. If you think it's a length, then you can actually tell the, the quality 50, of the of the or 20 yes. Yes. The thing is, you did not see any curve. That's the good thing. Yeah. If you did the That's check true. ring, you just see the curves. That's the quality check. Yeah. <laughs> if if you if you go over, but you will see no check ring is exactly straight. No. No. Except, human. except no, that the, la the laser is really. Yeah. 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 yeah but the yeah. laser, what do the laser? The laser did not. Uh, each check ring piece the same no. because if you had a little curve it's going to be extended and you had yep. little diamonds you had big diamonds yep. and here every diamond is the, same, the same caliber yes. when you see that rolling around and the yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> me too <laughs> the thing is important which is important look over this line this is a line you can control yeah that line or that line and this should be nearly straight, oh. and this is straight because this line, you know, no one goes and, and looks on the check ring like this. No, only if, only we do that. <laughs> but if you look, yeah. but if you look on, on, on the face of the check ring of that line, or that line, or that line, that's a thing. That's yeah. that's something yeah, you yeah. see that's by eye if you look at it. That's jumping into the eye, and if yeah. you had there a. I don't know, I think people who watch this are all going to be getting their forex yeah. for <laughs> yeah. 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 They are happy if they had any check ring on there. Hey Ralph, what's the name of that guy? <laughs> the Friendly Miller. <laughs> that be our apprentices, oh. and I like it. We had colleagues, I say they go to laugh into the base room, <laughs> but we like it, I like it. They put it everywhere. <laughs> They, I don't I've know. noticed a few children. No, 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 they had, if you walk around, <laughs> they did it on several points. Mm -hmm. It's a joke of them. They say, hey, I like it. We do it there. But a lot of our colleagues, ah, take it away. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, that's from the apprentices. They're easy to put back on, though. Yeah, they are, they are apprentices. They walk around, and then they put the, the eyes on. <laughs> yes. Wow. I mean, I, <laughs> my brain is still doing this. I, I had always thought that Kriegoff guns were made to a different level and it's always been very very difficult for me to explain that to people but after two days here at the factory I just cannot compute the level of excellence that goes into these guns. Just seeing the apprentice program, the way that these guys train, the time that these guys spend learning, the handwork that goes into these guns and the level of detail, attention and love that you guys put into it the development process, the constant improvements. It's been just a mind-blowing experience for me. I've, I've enjoyed every minute. Thank you so much. You're welcome anytime, and uh, I hope you had uh, you enjoyed the time here. <laughs> really and, did. Uh, had the chance to take a look at, at behind the scenes a little bit. Very and, tired. Uh, <laughs> thank you for coming here. John, I, I, I don't know about you, but 
it's, it's just the, the knowledge of the guys there and the amount of polishing. Yeah, everything's polished. <laughs> polished, polished. <laughs> I, I just the, the amount of time that's spent on each individual part is yeah. just staggering. Yeah, the apprentice scheme. I just love that, and I yeah. love the fact that you know there's there's when you buy Katie, whatever it is. You're investing in these guys' future yeah. in the factory and just the level of gun making that's going on here. Mm. It's, you know, everybody we've spoke to, the pride's there. Yeah. The pride's there in the job that they're doing. It's the atmosphere in the factory is really interesting. I've, you know, I've worked in engineering, different um, industry, but it's very rare you see people as happy <laughs> <laughs> um, and as, as obviously proud of what they do. Yeah. Um, everybody that we've spoken to has been more than happy to let us intrude in their day and show us what they're doing and it's been amazing it's been really really cool it, I just loved some of the tools yeah, the handmade tools the handmade everybody tools, makes their own tools the number stamped on and that's been there and yeah. it's just amazing to yeah. see all them bits and pieces yeah. it, was, it was funny you mentioned on very early on the first day we, we were being shown a process with a, with a hacksaw and um, it was a funny looking hacksaw yeah, yeah. and then later on when we discussed the, the apprentice programme they made it themselves 30 years ago. <laughs> it's absolutely stunning. Really, really intriguing to see. Um, and thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. It's been great. Thank you. Learned a, learned a lot. Yeah. 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 Um, sleep now, please. <laughs> <laughs> What's going? Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, it'd be great. Thank you also. Yeah. Really, really this concludes the Kriegoff Factory Tour Series. We had an absolute blast making this film. The team at Kriegoff went out of their way to welcome us, look after us and make us feel like part of the family. Please subscribe for more exclusive factory tours and content. Bye.